Hi everyone, we're going to make a start in a second. We're just waiting for a few more people to join. There's been lots of people registered for today, so we'll just give them a minute or two and then we'll make a start. Just a few more people joining. I think that's everyone now, Tim. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Guy. And um, welcome, everyone, this morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, before we get started, um, we just thought it would be good to do a few intros, just so you know who me and Guy are. There we go. So, yeah, as I said, good morning. Um, my name is Tim Coles. I have been with um, IPCIT for a while now. Um, my background is I've been in kind of the finance system ERP space for a number of years, um, working with a variety of different companies of all shapes and sizes across a variety of industries. So um, a real kind of wide understanding of the market. Uh, and I'm Guy. I'm one of the technical solution consultants here at IPLICIT. Uh, my role is to help understand customer requirements uh, and make sure they fit uh, or IPLICIT fits those requirements, uh, help them through that sort of um, proving what the software can do for you. Um, I've been doing this for a long time um, in lots of different industries and sectors. Uh, so I'm going to be taking you through some of the software later on. Brilliant. Um, and I don't know, Guy, if you just want to do a little bit of housekeeping as well for GoToWebinar. Yeah, just from a housekeeping point of view, you'll find your GoToWebinar panel on the side of your screens. Uh, within that panel, uh, you'll be able to access uh, handouts that we've made available for the, um, for the session. You can download those. Um, there's also the ability to um, ask questions um, through the chat or questions area. So if you do have questions as we go through, uh, we're going to have a Q&A session uh, at the end. So if you'd like to put some questions through to us, we'll do our best to either answer it during the session or we'll leave that to the Q&A session. Uh, the webinar is being recorded as well. So if you need to share the webinar, we'll be sending you links out to get to recording. If you want to give that to any colleagues or want you to rewatch anything, uh, if there's nothing on Netflix tonight, um, and please raise your hands as you run through and we'll do our best to answer it as we go through. Um, apart from that, sit back and enjoy. Brilliant. And just to get us started, um, we thought we'd just ask um, a quick question of everyone. Um, I suppose what would be interesting to understand is how long have you currently been using your finance system? Um, so if you want to put that in the chat or the questions, um, that'd be really interesting for us. Awesome. So whilst oh god, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I'm gonna say we're gonna see if anyone can beat my record. So 
of how long you've been using your finance system. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure that will be possible. I'll maybe tell you about that later. <laughs> Perfect. Good stuff. So what, 10 years? Wow. Okay. We've got some, some less than 10 years, uh, some more than 10 years, some less than five. So we've got a mixture. That's excellent. <laughs> no one's beat 25 years yet, though. <laughs> oh, 12. We're getting there. <laughs> 20. Oh, no. We are getting close. <laughs> oh, dear. Just whilst they're coming in as well, just as a little bit of an agenda. So we're going to run through a few slides this morning just to give you um, background to the landscape. Um, and then from there, we'll head over to Guy and Guy can show you a little bit of what iPlicit has to offer um, from a system perspective as well. Yeah. Shall we get going, Guy? Yes, get going. Thank you for doing that. That's excellent. I'm going to look through those later. <laughs> yeah, thanks, everyone. Good stuff. So we wanted to start off by setting the landscape. Um, and when we come to the finance system landscape as a whole, there are really three pillars that things sit within. Um, you've got your legacy or on-premise systems, so that's um, kind of locally hosted on a server in your office or under a desk, um, those sort of things. Um, there are a whole host of, of challenges that this can present. Um, they can be expensive to maintain. Um, it's hard to access them remotely. This was something that people really felt the pain of um, during COVID in particular. Um, upgrades can be really costly and difficult to do because someone's got to physically come in to do it. Um, they present a security risk, um, both from a data security and also if, if your office goes up in flames, um, everything's on the server there. They're very difficult to integrate other systems into. Um, and typically over time, they're becoming unsupported and therefore the level of support that you can expect on those um, diminishes over time as well. In the middle there, we've got hybrid and hosted systems. So these are systems that maybe once were on premise and have been pulled into a hosted environment. So they're accessible in, in kind of more readily accessible across across the globe. Um, typically, these are accessed by things like VPNs and that sort of thing. Um, again, this can create a whole load of issues. So this can create hosting issues. Um, again, hard to integrate because they've got the same limitations as an on premise system. Um, we've heard so many times, and I, I know guys got way more stories than this than me about this. But things like VPNs, where you have a limited number of seats available, so if too many people log in, it chucks someone else out, and their work's not saved. You have all these sort of um, challenges that you can face through hybrid and hosted systems. And then finally, we have True Cloud. Um, so these are systems that were built to to be used in the cloud from day one. Um, they don't come with those inherent limitations. So um, there's no ongoing maintenance cost. Um, it's all kind of handled within the cloud for you. Um, they typically have automatic upgrades, so you're not having to pay for upgrade cycles. Um, you can access them on any device from any browser in any location um, with a very high level of security, often like bank um, levels of security. And also because they are cloud systems, they're very easily integrated into as well, which means that you start to have that data visibility um, across the board. To break that down a little more for you, and obviously with the topic of this being moving to the cloud, um, within that true cloud landscape, there are really three buckets that systems fit into. You've got your small and starter systems. So typically these are the likes of Xero, QuickBooks, there are a number of other systems that sit within there. You've got your mid-market finance systems. That's exactly where iPlicit sits. And then you've got your enterprise, your real kind of top brass um, ERP systems that are typically a lot larger, a lot more complicated, um, come with kind of heavier price tags, longer implementations and higher levels of complexity. Um, and, and that's kind of a, a real range and, and you've got to kind of think about where you sit in that spectrum. That can be really hard and we find this across the board with a lot of the companies we speak to. And so what we tend to see is there's some really important things to think about when you're deciding where you sit in that spectrum of, of cloud systems and we think that you can bucket those into kind of four main buckets the first one being the level of reporting complexity that you have within within your business um, do you have things like group structures do you have multiple entities that you have to report by do you report under multiple currencies so do you have entities in different countries that require different currency reporting um, do you report across multiple dimensions or do you have specific reporting requirements like fund management in the not-for-profit space, for example? All of this adds to complexity and, and kind of 
determines where you sit on that spectrum. Secondly, the level of volume that you handle as a business. So how think about how many transactions you're handling on a monthly basis. How, how big is that volume? Also, how many customers and suppliers do you have? How much of a complexity do you have there? Next is the size of the organization. So how big is your finance team? Um, is it a large team? Is it just one or two of you? How complex are your current processes? Do you have a lot of current processes embedded within the business or actually are you quite light on those processes and you need to kind of implement them as part of that project? And what is your rate of growth? Where do you expect to be in five years time? Finally, it's important to think about how efficient your current processes are. Do you currently run a lot of your finance process on spreadsheets? Um, is automation a big focus for the project or are you already kind of fairly heavily automated as a business anyway? Um, how much would you be looking to integrate into a system? Um, those sort of things are really important to consider as well, um, as well as the level of kind of workflows and approvals that you want within your business. Are you looking to implement maybe a purchase ordering process as part of this project or, or, or things like that of that nature? And as you are thinking about your move to cloud, what is obviously you'll be kind of really thinking about is the return investment that you can expect from a move to a cloud system um, and these again they fit into a number of buckets that that you can expect from a cloud migration apologies so firstly it's the speed of which you can implement the system um, typically legacy older on-premise systems took a long time to implement there was a whole setup before you had to go through and define your reporting requirements and those sort of things with cloud systems they tend to be a lot more rapid to implement can be done over a far shorter time frame um, and this means that you're using the system quicker, you're getting value out of that system earlier, and it just means that the whole kind of onboarding and user acceptance process can be a lot more streamlined. Secondly, you can expect not to have to pay infrastructure and upgrade costs. So you're not having to buy a server and then in a few years upgrade that server or replace it. Um, you're not having to bring people in to, to run upgrades. You're, and often when you run those upgrades, it can often mean that you have to do more work on your systems and your processes to make sure they fit with those upgrades. All of that's eradicated. You can expect increased levels of automation from a, a move to a cloud finance system. Um, and that comes not only from the power of the platform, but also the, the fact that you can integrate it with other systems um, through open APIs or pre-built connectors. And that means that you can get full visibility across the business. And with that comes visibility for you as a finance team as well. So having far more control over spending, over revenue processes, being able to see reports in a real time fashion rather than having to wait to the end of the month before you pull things into spreadsheets. All of this means that you have improved visibility as a team as well. And we see this with the companies that we work with. Um, I pulled a few quotes off of our, our case studies here, um, which I just wanted to, to kind of show you as kind of a demonstration of the sort of benefits you can see from a move to the cloud. Um, down the bottom there, we've got um, Health Poverty Action, one of our customers who experienced straight away um, a six week saving on their year end, purely by their ability to kind of automate their consolidation process um, at year end. We've got Profile Creatives there who found that by implementing um, iPlicit, they were able to, to take three and a half days of work and reduce that into half a day in, in a single afternoon, which is obviously a huge um, time save as well. And then at the top there, kind of more on the, the kind of idea of ease of implementation when it comes to cloud systems. Um, Corathrum International, they implemented iPlicit. It was the fourth um, accounting system they'd put in in 30 years, and it was by far and away the most streamlined and, and efficient migration process they'd experienced. And that's something we see across the board. So there are some of the benefits you can hope to um, experience by a move to the cloud um, and, a, and a cloud finance system. And finally, it's that connectivity piece. Um, typically, when we work with um, companies using legacy or on-premise systems, one of the biggest challenges is that they find that they're pu almost putting up the gates to finance um, as part of that. Um, and that comes a lot because you can't integrate those older systems with other business systems that you might have within the organization. Um, things like Salesforce, um, Expensify, all of BrightPay, um, all of these systems can really mean that you're not having to do manual processes to enter data, but also the other teams around the organization have visibility into what's going on. Removes the need for you to have to handle internal inquiries 
and removes the possibility of errors as well. So all of these are benefits that you can expect to experience by moving to cloud systems. Hopefully that's given a, a good idea of the landscape. Um, and I will hand over to, at this point, tell you a little bit more about how iPlicit help you with these areas. Um, and it's worth mentioning whilst um, Guide takes control of the screen here, that we, as part of the handouts, um, we'll have a checklist that we will share with you um, to allow you to kind of really weigh up your options and see where you fit on that spectrum of, of systems. Guy, I think we can see your sc screen now. So They're coming through. You. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to give you um, a whistle stop tour um, on some of the main uh, the main areas we talk to customers and prospective customers about moving to a cloud-based system. So we'll take off, um, we'll do it in a couple of sections. We'll cover off things like self-service that seems to be one of the most important reasons or one of the biggest advantages of moving to a cloud system. Uh, we'll take a look at how you can work with systems that offer multi-company environments for those of you who have more than one uh, entity within your organization. Um, we'll also cover things like workflows, automations, uh, and that old uh, finance favorite of reporting and analysis. And I'll try to cover as much as we can in the next 14 minutes. Uh, ask questions as we go through and we'll finish off with a, a Tim will wind everything up and then we'll finish with a Q&A at the end as well. So, uh, right. Self-service and reporting. Because iPlicit, uh, obviously we're going to uh, talk about things in an iPlicit sense, but because we're a cloud-based system, that means I don't need to install any software. It means that I can access it from a browser, from any device, from anywhere in the world. Um, as well as being able to log in securely with things like multi-factor authentication, Active Directory integration, so you know your system's secure. Um, from an end user's point of view, um, if I'm maybe not one of the finance team, how do I get access to the information that's in the finance team? Do I have to wait for a report to be presented to me? Or um, we find that the, a big advantage of moving to a cloud system is we can offer, a, they tend to offer be, or be able to offer a lot more self-service to those end users. So me, when I log into the system, I can be presented with charts, with dashboards of pertinent and relevant information to me to manage my part of the organization. So I can make the right decisions in a more informed um, point of view. And with it being a cloud-based system, um, it also means that these dashboards, charts, reports that we'll take a look at later on um, are all available to me um, in a live scenario. So I can get the most up-to-date latest information without having to hassle the finance team, wait for a, a month then report to get out. I can get an overview. So I've got a lot more control and flexibility. Um, users um, should be able to uh, integrate with that information as well. So the fact that they can drill down into charts, they can uh, output information, they can drill into live transactional data, um, all seems to be really handy. Um, and a big difference to maybe a, a, a sort of an on-premise system or even a hosted system that has sort of limited accessibility, that type of thing. So being able to offer that um, real-time, up-to-date information across the areas, but I might want to look at more information than just some dashboards and charts. Um, I might be a budget holder. <clears throat> so I might want to access and see how my um, budgets are running. So I can see my departmental budget, um, within the system, we'll talk about workflows later on, but budgets can be entered into the system. But me as a budget holder can then see my bits of the system, where we're going against budget. I might be able to look at um, variants. Um, and another key thing to having access to the data in one place, so I've got a single version of the truth, means that I might be able to drill into transactional information, answer my own inquiries, spot something before it becomes an issue. Um, and having that real-time access and visibility of that on uh, that information from any device as well. So with cloud-based systems, what we're also able to do is provide access to the information through a browser, but I can also access uh, the information through a mobile device as well. So if I'm out and about, uh, there might be things that um, I need to uh, authorize. There might be things I want to check up on. So within iPlicit, we offer um, iOS and Android um, mobile apps so that I can go and look at workflows and authorizations. I've got the ability to uh, have a look at those dashboards. So again, it doesn't really matter where I am. I could be queuing up for a coffee in Costa and find out how my project income analysis is doing at the same time. I might be authorizing someone's expenses. I might even be doing my own expenses. So that self-service doesn't just, um, um, it doesn't just pertain to just access to information. It also means um, self-service to be able to create information as well. So the ability to create expenses, timesheets, 
um, requisitions, purchase orders, workflow, and that type of thing, um, all expands to and what used to be quite a, a sort of a frustrating or a limitation um, of a lot of legacy uh, and on-premise systems. So access to information, self-service, um, and also the ability to answer my own queries as well. If I'm looking for a purchase invoice, for example, um, with iPlicit, uh, we can search across the entire database, or more, probably more importantly, I can search across the parts of the database that I've got access to. So again, we're really stringent and not controlling, but um, giving you the capacity to make sure that the right people have the access to the right pieces of information. But if I was looking for a piece of information, looking for a document perhaps, uh, I could find the purchase invoice that I was looking for. I could um, see how that purchase invoice, if it's been paid, I can drill into the purchase invoice itself. I might want to take a look at the copy of the purchase invoice. So I've got access to the, um, I've got um, the ability to go, and crack, um, to go and track that particular information. Um, if that information has been, um, if that information has been paid, I can go and see allocations. I can see what else we paid as part of that payment run. We paid and maybe another couple of invoices as part of that. Um, if that transaction had come through a, a workflow, I might be able to see uh, how that's come through, who's authorised that, who's accessed that particular document, who approved it, has there been any changes to it. So again, with uh, cloud-based systems, we've got the ability to sort of date and timestamp and put lots of granularity in terms of, especially if you want to keep the auditors happy, so you can prove those evidence of um, uh, segregation of duties, you can prove you've got controls around the, the income and expenditure uh, that you're incur incurring as an organisation, um, and also the analysis uh, that you need as an organisation. As you evolve and change and your requirements uh, change, you need to be able to um, access that information um, and maybe have a look at income expenditure accounts, profit loss accounts, balance sheets, but I might want to see that information by cost centre. Um, I might be one of the um, uh, management team uh, who's responsible for a few departments, so I can see all of that information. And again, with the ability to drill down into that information, um, it gives me the chance to go and get the answers uh, to what I need to um, in real time. The other part of um, having a cloud-based system is it makes it nice and easy for us to do things like workflows. So whether or not people um, workflows need to um, originate around our income, so whether it's quotes or orders, um, going through to dispatching and invoicing potentially, or more commonly around purchasing, we've got the ability to enter purchase requisitions. Uh, those purchase requisitions can be templated, um, so people don't need to keep um, um, waste time completing the same sort of requisitions that they're doing regularly. Uh, we've got the ability for, to pass that information through, um, um, through iPlicit's automated workflows. So as something gets um, entered into the system, uh, I will get a message to say that there's something for me to authorise. Um, when I go through that authorisation, I'll also be, that will also be supported by uh, internal communications. So we don't just send information through iPlicit. Those informations will, um, those communications and tasks will go out to my mobile devices, and we can also support them by um, email communications as well. So users will get that information with links to those documents, and we can also include. And for those of you who have uh, clients who may be approving uh, timesheets, for example, um, on your behalf, we can send them links to those um, documents, and where they can have an email, and then with a, just a hyperlink, they can click on that hyperlink and then approve. Uh, that consultant's time that they spent um, at their premises. So workflow shouldn't, though, just sit around procurement. It might be uh, workflow around setting up new suppliers. It might be workflow around changing bank account details. There's a lot of, obviously, with the um, high level of um, phishing attacks, that type of thing, and fraud, um, to be able to control um, bank account information, personal information, make sure a system's GDPR compliant, um, and also to have workflow around those particular areas. So if someone does come and change a bank account, um, that will get logged by the system. That might go through an approval process. If someone's setting up a new supplier or a new customer in the sales ledger, um, the ability for that to go through some authorization processes so we can evidence that information. Um, to be able to have a cloud-based system where we can also use that as a central point of truth for the financial information, but also a central control for things like additional documents and to be able to store contract information for the system to automatically restore, ret, ret, retain and store 
um, uh, statements, remittances, other contract information, payroll information, um, registered documents, the ability to have that information means you've got a, one place that anyone in the organization can go to to find the piece of information that you've gone that, that they require, um, but also to be able to take that information and make sure that information is stored securely and only available to those people who need it. <clears throat> and because or how we've invented uh, invented or designed iPlicit, uh, we also designed iPlicit uh, to be a multi-company system. Uh, so the fact that um, you can then produce um, age debtors and creditors reports that might be consolidated across your organization, across the different groups, um, lots of um, time-saving automation in terms of being able to create intercompany transactions, create a sales invoice in company one, creates a purchase invoice in company two to have that um, to be able to done uh, automatically, to be able to consolidate information across your group, um, regardless of the currency. So having a cloud-based system that is fed with currency feeds from live systems, uh, from live um, data sources. So we've always got up-to-date currency rates, but it also means that I can then view uh, my transactional consolidated information in any, any currency that I want. I want to take a look at this in euros. I want to take a look at this in cryptocurrency, maybe. Although, as we're going out of favor at the moment, being able to backdate reports. Um, and also, because uh, sort of data storage and security um, is a lot more widespread in cloud-based systems, it also means we can keep all of your data in the system for any length of time. You've got some control in terms of when you decide to archive information, or you don't need to archive information because we don't have servers running out of disk space anymore. Um, and we also try and take control in terms of how your software keeps up to date as well. The fact that you're cloud-based means that we can control um, updates to the software, which we do on a monthly basis. So a regular updates into the software means you are taking advantage of all of the enhancements that we're doing, not just for you, but for other customers and take benefit of all that information. And because we're cloud-based, it also means that you've got that information. Um, we do that out of office hours. Uh, you can just take advantage of the new uh, new features that we're adding into it. Um, and letting the system take the strain uh, also applies to all of our automation center. So our automation center has been designed to get this implicit to do some of that um, work that the finance team takes up valuable um, parts of their time and get the system to do that for them. Things like automating your accruals, things like the ability to produce uh, deferred income calculations at source. So we enter a um, some income into the system, and then I ask iPlicit to defer that over a different over different sets of time periods, maybe specific events, all automated and included in the system. The ability to do disbursements, eliminations, but to, for you to control how we do intercompany transactions. Um, really nice one, one of my favorites um, is the fact that we're a group system, so we might be uh, need to produce a group back return. Be able to take that group back return, um, and then when I submit that, that return over MTD, um, then iPlicit will do the intercompany journals for you. And then from a reporting point of view, uh, having internal reporting options, so you've seen those um, some of those inquiry screens that we've got with iPlicit, the ability to schedule reports so we can push reports out, be able to uh, look at those dashboards, um, but we also still, no matter what we seem to do from a cloud-based system, Lots of um, finance teams like to still work with Excel. So we provide Excel plugins so that you can get live access to the information that's sat within your finance system just from an Excel spreadsheet. And whether that Excel spreadsheet is on my computer, whether that Excel spreadsheet is um, on a SharePoint site, whether that Excel spreadsheet is just part of our web-based um, or your web-based um, uh, Excel functionality, it also means I can get to that information from any, play, uh, any point in time. And not just me, but for the fact that iPlicit will then be able to give me that information in real time. So any users will be able to look at that information at any point in time, drill down into transactional information, um, and get to the piece of information without having to wait for the finance team to produce their management accounts uh, and reformat those and publish them. All right. Um, and just in addition to that, um, before I run out of time, um, because we're a cloud-based system, and we also have extensive sets of APIs, as Tim mentioned, so I can link it into the reporting tools of my choice. If it's Power BI or any other analysis tool, get that information to be provided by the finance system. It's the analytical tools that you need uh, to support your organization. Have bits of implicit data, make your CRM data, your payroll data, all in one place. Okay. 
Uh, that's a very short tour of iPlicit. There is lots more information available on our website. I'm going to pass back to Tim. Brilliant. Thanks, Guy. Let me just share back my Thanks, screen. That's coming through. Perfect. So, as Guy said, um, we wanted to save some time or, or have a little bit of time at the end here for a bit of Q&A. Um, we have got a couple of questions. Um, I had one particularly around expense management there. I don't know if you want to pick that up. Um, but if there are any other questions, please feel free to pop them in the, the question piece of, of GoToWebinar. Yeah, so expense management, those inbuilt expenses, because you just um, treat expenses as part of the procurement process, as part of the yeah, purchase ledger, essentially. So um, your um, staff um, and volunteers as well, if you're a charitable organisation, for example, the ability to um, have um, volunteers um, use the app or use a browser to be able to enter their expenses. They can choose from predetermined pick lists of the expense types. Uh, they can attach photo, take photos of their receipts. They can drag and drop uh, copies of invoices, hotel bills, that type of thing into the browser. They can start something on their phone, finish it off on their browser. And then again, that expense goes through um, an approval process. Uh, we'll pay them through per payment runs on the purchase ledger or take information and send that to payroll. Uh, that's all been approved and um, if you've got consultants or, or staff members who need to work abroad, we can give them cash advances, we can, um, sorry, not we, you can log cash advances to them uh, and we can also um, retain on the expense claim multi-currency expense lines in there as well. So if they've got, um, you know, if they're traveling abroad and things like that, they can put a bit of sterling in there, a bit of euros, all on the same expense claim. Um, that, seems to work really well and be very popular brilliant thanks guy um okay. got another one here um have you got anything that you can send us that helps us work out which um cloud system would be best for us um yeah absolutely so off the back of this um our team will be getting in touch with you to send out a, a pdf document that will just help you kind of get a better idea of where you sit in that spectrum of, of vendors and what system might suit you best so a whole list of potential requirements that you can um, analyze yourselves against to work out where you fit in that, that spectrum. Um, Guy, is there any more that you can see coming through? There is um, one question about um, charities uh, and nonprofit organizations. Um, we can, we've got lots of nonprofit organizations using iPlicit. They take advantage of iPlicit's unlimited analysis dimensions. So it doesn't matter if we've got projects, if we've got, we've got inbuilt fund accounting, We've got things like partial VAT, um, lots of um, the ability to produce income and expenditure accounts versus uh, and sort related formats as well as management account formats to your um, uh, to your accounts, and the ability to consolidate as well because we find lots of uh, nonprofit organisations will have more than one entity. Having all that information in the one place uh, seems to be really helpful. Um, but I think the analysis levels, so you can get your fund analysis out of the system in real time um, without having to. Um, without having to export to Excel and then um, sort of um, uh, reformat it in Excel or analyze it in Excel. That seems to be really, really popular. And I can even give trustees access to information, but that's a very controversial topic. So. <laughs> <laughs> One that comes up though, right? Yeah, um, does come up. There's a question here in terms of, well, I think might be best for you to answer, Guy, um, in terms of how long does it take to get set up on iPlicit if I were to say coming from a system like Sage 50, for example? Uh, if we're coming from Sage 50, um, it should be a fairly straightforward setup process. Um, we include project management, so you get allocated project management, go through your requirements. We'll include data migration, um, uh, you, obviously the training on the software itself and the, setting up all the configuration. We also expect you to be self-sufficient on iPlicit for any customer. Um, but coming from, someone coming from um, Sage 50, probably around, tends to average about 15 days, 15, 16 days maybe, sometimes less, sometimes more, depending on what parts of the system um, you want to access. Um, migrate your data over. Um, we put everything into a sandbox environment as well to train you, so you got to test it. And there's lots of user acceptance testing. Um, I probably think, yeah, ish, 15-ish days maybe, over a couple of months. Awesome. Awesome. Sorry, we've got loads of questions coming through, so I really apologise if we don't get to answer all of these. Um, but also a question around cash flow reporting, Guy. Um, don't know if you just want to quickly yeah. touch on that. Uh, so we've got, um, obviously we can load, oh, sorry, obviously because I haven't shown you, um, we've got unlimited budgeting and forecasting that we've got in iPlicit. We have cash inquiries in iPlicit, so 
Um, I can look at cash flow forecasting, so sales and purchase ledger information from cash flow dates, uh, include forecasting information there. Uh, to be, um, we've got some inbuilt cash flow um, forecasting inquiries within iPlicit, uh, and a lot of people to do what an, what if analysis. Um, people tend to use the Excel link, so they can do pull down data, manipulate it all in Excel, do my what if calculations in Excel, um, or others will use um, APIs into. There's there's lots of sort of cash flow forecasting tools out there as well. So um, having the APIs means we can provide that information live into those other systems as well. So absolutely, sort and of three in, choices. In fact, yeah, we it's the sort of thing we get asked about a lot as well. Um, as I topic. said, I'm just conscious of time. Should we do do one more here? I'm just going to try and cover a couple in, in one go. Um, so questions around kind of checklists around steps and timings for implementation. That's absolutely something we can follow up with um, directly on that. But in terms of how long it would you'd need to keep a right to use license um, of your old system, do you want to just quickly pick that one up and then we'll finish there? Yeah, that comes up. Um, yeah, if you're coming from a legacy, sort of, especially an on-premise system, um, we do have the ability to hold your data, to hold your historical data in our iPlicit archive. So if that server is looking a bit dodgy, you don't want to keep that that going, or if the maintenance on it is high, or your incumbent supplier might be charging you a very expensive right to use license, um, we can upload the data. Um, into our iPlicit archive that's available then within iPlicit uh, and then it's also obviously secured, securely stored uh, and available through through iPlicit um, but also being backed up by us as part of your system as well like that so that will keep you all compliant, keep HMRC happy and you'll have all your transactional data from your historical uh, legacy system. Something that's really popular right in terms of eradicating the need for that right to use license at all. Yeah it is, it makes the IT managers just go I don't need to worry about that finance server ever again. <laughs> gone absolutely um i apologize we've not managed to answer all the questions there's been loads coming in so thank you so much for that level of engagement um, we'll get back to people um individually um, on any of those questions that we haven't answered thank you absolutely yeah we'll follow up on all of those so um be rest assured we'll, we'll answer those questions for you but it, i suppose it just leaves us to say um a big thank you for joining us today if you like to reach out directly, we'll obviously leave you with these details as well, so you don't have to make a note of them. Um, but I'd be more than happy to kind of jump on a call and talk through that kind of process of moving to the cloud and answer any questions you've got directly there as well. So some contact details online there. Um, and thank you so much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. And hopefully it's been useful for everyone. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Cheers.